I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. If you have a Betaflight F3 board, have you noticed that the amps and the milliamp hours are way off? They're reading super low. I'm going to tell you why, and I'm going to show you how to fix it. And if you don't have a Betaflight F3 board, I'm going to show you how to calibrate any current sensor you've got. Stay tuned. It's no secret that I strongly prefer to fly copters with an OSD, and I prefer to fly OSDs that have a current sensor. I feel like knowing how many amps your copter is pulling is really important for evaluating the setup, especially if you're working on different props and different motors, knowing the amp draw in flight, not just on the bench. Bench, te bench tests are, are good, they have their place, but knowing the amp draw in flight is really useful and you can't do that without a current sensor. And I think that milliamp hours are a better way of knowing when your battery is done than volts. At the very least, milliamp hours and volts give you something to cross check against each other so you can tell if your batteries are getting old. What I mean by that is, let's say you have a 1300 milliamp hour battery and you pull 1050 milliamp hours out of it and when you're done, it's resting at 15 volts. I would consider that to be a pretty normal result. But let's say as that battery gets old, you continue to pull 1050 milliamp hours out of it and it's resting at 14.8 at the end of the flight, 14.6. Or maybe you're flying and you notice that it's sagging to 14.0, 13.8 and you're like, oh, I better land. And when you land, you've only pulled 700 milliamp hours or 800 milliamp hours out of it. That disconnect between the resting voltage and the number of milliamp hours you get is a good indicator that your battery are getting old and might need to be replaced. So that's my pitch as to why I prefer to fly with a current sensor. And I know there are those of you out there who are purebred racers who don't even fly with an OSD, or maybe you fly with just volts. That's fine, I get that, but I like current sensors and I know a lot of you do too. But here's the problem with current sensors. They often come from the factory and they're not calibrated correctly. Now, one reason that may happen is that it's a cheap board and somebody slapped it together and they didn't bother calibrating the current sensor and they, they just didn't give you correct calibration values at all. Now, that's not the case with the Betaflight F3 that are reading incorrectly. What I believe has happened with the Betaflight F3 is this. The first batches of Betaflight F3 boards that came from FPV model, and I have one of these, I believe they came with a scale value of 400 and I've tested that and it reads really, really close to correct. I've compared it with an, a clamp meter and other ways of measuring the current. It's very close to correct. But there's another batch, a more recent batch that I got, and I've gotten several of them from, from a couple different sources, and they all read incorrectly. And I think what has happened is uh, there's a resistor that sits in front of the current sensor, and the value of this resistor determines the correct value for the scale in the calibration section of, of beta flight or clean flight. And I believe that that resistor value got changed. This is, uh, I could just pull out a multimeter and test it. Wow, I could have done that if I was a more thorough researcher. Well, I didn't. Uh, I believe that that value must have changed in a batch. I did reach out to FPV model and ask them if they knew of any change. And they said that they were not aware of any change but that doesn't mean that a mistake didn't happen. I've tested two of a recent, the recent batch of, F, of Betaflight F3 boards and they read incorrectly. The current sensor is way off with a default scale of, I think it's around 400. So what this means is that your amps and your milliamp hours are way low and this is a real problem. One, of the, one reason it's a problem is if you fly based on the milliamp hours, you're gonna kill your batteries. And I talked to a guy just yesterday. Uh, we were flying together. He said he got a Betaflight F3. He built a copter around it. He flew till he drew whatever, 10,000 10, milliamp hours out of a 1300. But before he got there, the battery just tanked because he had actually just completely over discharged it because the milliamp hours was not correct. So that's risk number one. You should always monitor your voltage when you're flying because you should know that these current sensors often are not reading completely correctly. And you should always do a mental calibration that when you fly the battery down to 15 volts, here's how many milliamp hours you've pulled out. And that way, even if the current reading is inaccurate, you can still kind of get a sense of how much capacity you're pulling out of your batteries. So I sit down to test these boards and get correct values for them. And I'm not gonna make you watch the whole video. I hope you'll watch the whole video. I think it's interesting. I'm gonna show you how I tested the current sensing. Uh, yeah, and but the, I'm gonna just gonna give you the value. What you need to do, in my opinion, if you have a newer Betaflight F3 board that is not reading current correctly, is you need to go in to the Betaflight configurator, 
go to the configuration tab and go to where you see offset and scale. And I believe that a scale value of between about 250 and 275 should give you a correct value or pretty close to correct for your copter. You can get a rough sense of whether it's correct by looking at how many milliamp hours the OSD says you pulled out of the battery and then looking at how many milliamp hours the charger says you put back in. And if those are pretty close to the same, then you can feel reasonably confident that your, that your current reading is, is probably close to correct. But there's more to it than that. I hope you'll stick around and watch this interesting testing. Uh, but if you just want that value and you just want to try and make yours read correctly, there's the value. See, I didn't hold it off till the end, right? YouTube points for me, I guess. Let's go ahead now and look at how I actually did the testing. So the novel way of calibrating it that I don't think you're going to be able to reproduce is, uh, you can see here I've got, first of all, I've got this naked board. I've, I've, this is just a spare one that I've got. Many of us will already have the board in the copter at the time that we're trying to uh, calibrate it. And so we'll have it all wired up and won't be able to do what I'm about to show you. What I've done here is I've got the standard power lead right here and attached to one of the ESC wires or the ESC pads, I've got an XT60. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in to my 60 amp discharge load that I use when I do my battery tests. And now I will be able to easily draw current from the board through the board without having spinning props of death terrifying me. Oh, it's so, so stressful to do it that way. I know that some of you are wondering about the current carrying capacity of these ESC pads. I believe that they're officially rated for something like 30 or 40 amps, uh, and we're going to be pulling way more than that. It's going to be coming in here and going out here, and, and this pad's here may be soaking as much as 70 or 80 amps. Isn't that a problem? And the answer to that, I believe, is no. The reason that these pads are rated at whatever 30 or 40 amps is not because of the pads themselves, but because of the amount of heat buildup that will occur when the current is flowing across the board. But since we're using these ESC pads right here, right next to the, uh, the shunt resistor, the current is going to come in go through the shunt resistor. Now that's obviously fine for whatever 100, 200 amps, whatever the board is rated for. And then just, it's gonna cross this few millimeters here, boop, and go right out. So I think we're gonna be fine. We're not gonna get heat buildup and, and the, the pad itself will be able to take the current. That's what I think. If I smoke the board, I'll certainly let you know. But people have talked about, you can just solder to the load side of the shunt resistor if that's what you wanna do. And we're essentially doing exactly that. Now, if you want to try to do this and you've already got your flight controller in the copter or you don't have a 60 amp, 80 amp big load that you can discharge into like I do, what you can do is this. Uh, well, I showed you in a previous video a, a not super recommended way of doing it where you get one of your dumb friends to hold it down. All right, hold on. Okay, now I'm set. while you spin the props up and he he holds it down real hard and is terrified and he's, ah! uh it's not the best idea what you can also do is this you take your props and you flip them over and then you cross them left to right so uh, what that'll do is this don't reverse your motors just take the props flip them over and cross them left to right so here you can see that the leading edge of the prop is on the inside if I flip the prop over, the leading edge will be on the outside. Now the prop is spinning the wrong direction. And then if I cross them left to right now, the props are exactly how they, they're working exactly correctly, but they're pushing down instead of pushing up. And what you can then do, especially if you put the copter down on a, on a towel or a, a carpet, on a, on a surface like this where it can easily move, it could move around a little, but if you put it down on a surface like a towel or a carpet or you find some way to strap it down, you can essentially spin the motors up as fast as you want and the copter will not go anywhere. It will just push itself down into the ground. Now, if you do it this way, don't arm the copter. Don't arm the copter because it will try to fly and the motors will be pushing the wrong direction. Bleh, it'll flip out. Use the motors tab though. You can use the motors tab to spin the motors. You should spin them all at the same speed so you don't get any differential thrust. But if you put them on, like I told you, the copter will push itself down into the ground. And I've done tests uh, where you essentially just can spin the motors up or down as, as, as brave as you are because even though the copter's not going anywhere, it's still terrifying to have the props spinning so freaking fast and you're, you gotta be a little bit close to the copter to read the current sensor, and it's still terrifying, but it is safer than having one of your dumb friends hold down the copter.
The other thing I'm going to do is this. This is a parallel charge board. I like parallel charging. I have some videos about parallel charging. This is a parallel charge board with an XT60 on it. If you have a parallel charge board that has banana plugs, you're going to be really careful about doing this because those naked banana plugs could touch together and spark and etc. Bad deal. What I've basically done here is I've made a great big battery. So this is 1500s and some 1300s, one, two, three, four, five, six of them. I've got a great honking battery that will be able to discharge 60 or 70 amps without breaking a sweat. Uh, the larger the battery, the, the lower the C of the discharge uh, because it's a less discharge proportional to the battery's capacity. So this is another other thing I'm going to do here. Well, I see that we are now coming up on about 10 minutes of content, which is, I think, a good length for many of you. I know some of you like the longer videos, but many of you don't. So I'm actually going to cut it here. I'm going to let you, I gave you the freaking calibration value, right? That's what you're really here for. But uh, that, that's the background and the intro. And then I'm going to show you the actual testing. Um, there's going to be spreadsheets. Oh, yeah. Spreadsheets. And ooh, best fit lines. Oh, yeah. Regression analysis. Okay, are you psyched for tomorrow? No, no. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll show you the actual current testing tomorrow. Thank you for watching, and as always, happy flying.